Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to Talking Shit with your boy, the sophisticated jerk and the manic genius. Uh, uh, hey, man, I got us a good clip. You know, we're going to break down the uh, Vivica Fox with her old ass, you know, talk about like <laughs> her her new dating and uh, qualifications and stuff. So let me go. Shots fired. Yeah. <laughs> this shit was how, old is, how, how, how old is Vivica a. Fox, by the way? Like 60. Damn. And what's her? I didn't get a chance to see the clip. What's what's her issue? Oh, let me let me just play it because it, it, it jumps out early. She she she's like kind of having a I say like a awareness awareness moment where she's like oh kind of oh, changing damn. her standards now and stuff, which which is good, but it's a little too late. But we're gonna play. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. She's uh she's she's fifty nine. So she's yeah, and her birthday is coming up in July. Mm. What what what's the date? July thirtieth. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's right around the goddamn. Yeah, it's almost uh, June already. So okay, let me play this clip. Real I mean, quick. from this picture right here, she looks pretty good still. Like, oh, this yeah, picture no, must no, be no, old, not, not... huh? Oh, this picture must be old. She does not look like that. <laughs> so you're looking at the you you getting catfished by Google and shit. <laughs> but all right, let me go ahead and play this. Are you dating? Yeah. How's it going? I'm wanting to date. Yeah. I just yeah. it's limited resources out there, right? <laughs> yes. Because I'm not getting on an app. Well, if Vivica Fox checked out her Twitter app last night, she would have been surprised to see that she was trending. For some reason, a couple of Twitter accounts. Like self-described media and news company Black Millionaires and my mixtapes, whose byline is culture since 2011. Okay. Well, on Memorial Day, which is usually a slow news day, so I guess, yeah, they were bored. They tweeted about Vivica's interview on Today with Hoda and Jenna from over a month ago, April 25th. Yeah, and I'm taking applications. Oh, so you know, you got I, a friend. Okay. I'm okay. Good. We'll keep, we'll be all, we'll and be I don't discriminate. He can be, I'm not against different nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> you know that too. Yeah, them tweeting that Vivica is openly looking for love as she approaches her 60th birthday on July 3rd, has got a lot of people talking. I don't know. Okay. Now, first off, it's important to point out that Vivica did not say she's looking for her husband. And what are you so, looking for at this stage, this point? A partner. Yeah. Why is that an important distinction? Well, black millionaires, who is everything culture, finance, and wealth, I shouldn't have to explain this to you. When you break up, a partner isn't entitled to a huge chunk of your fortune. The reason that Sandra Bullock and Kelly Clarkson say they're not going to marry again. And yeah, Vivica was actually married before. She's married for about three years up to 2002. A woman doesn't like paying all the bills all the time. Mm. And I can only ask for help so many times before I had to, to come to the conclusion that um, I didn't want to be the breadwinner in this family. My mother didn't raise me to take care of a man. So yeah, Vivica Friesen hey, has a partner. She when with? I say a partner, I want someone that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's not intimidated by who and what I am. Yeah. yeah. Um, that likes to try. But I mean, can you pause it? <laughs> I did kind of scroll through Twitter to see what kind of discussion. Yeah. I mean, I hear what she's saying. And uh, I hear a lot of women say this, but, you know, if she's, uh, I don't know what her net worth is, but I'm sure she's a multimillionaire because um, she's just been in the, the the movie game for such a long time. She's got some amazing movies under her belt. Uh, definitely a talented actress. Um but yeah, um, for her to, you know, be with her husband and like, you know, cite that as the reason, it's like, I mean, I, I have to know the details of like, did he marry her and then, you know, you know, change his career or was he always this, you know, not able to, you know, bring that level of financial resources that she was looking for. But I mean, a lot of times, you know, I love how she put it on him. Like he can't do this. He, you know, he, he you know, providing, um, I think that's the word she used, but it's just like, not many men can provide for your expensive ass lifestyle. So, <laughs> you know, you have to factor that in too when you're like making that assessment of like, Hey, this person is not doing this. It's just like, most men probably can't do that. So, and most men who can do that, they're not, probably checking for somebody in her age range 
because they're probably already in relationships or, you know, if they're single at, you know, at the same round around the same age group, um, then they know they can have genders just about any woman they want. So they're probably in that tricking territory. But you with your you brought up a good point. So, you know, of course, I was Googling some shit. So Vivica's net worth is three million. OK, the dude's name was Christopher Harvest, the one she was. Uh, he has a net worth of six million. Oh, <laughs> so. Oh, my God. So she's complaining uh, about her husband who has a greater or her ex-husband who had a greater net worth than her. Yeah. So he was a model and uh, it says vocalist, model, vocalist mm -hmm. and model. So, yeah, higher net worth. But, you know, like definitely like successful people by the metrics, but not to the point mm -hmm. where you could kind of do whatever you want. And I think probably in this case, because I'm glad you brought that up, like when he was talking about like lifestyle and stuff. And we was actually, you know, the podcast we was having last week, we were talking about narcissism and manipulation, how people throw the terms at somebody because <clears throat> they might not like something. This is one of those cases where he probably might have been a little financially savvy and was like, look, I'm not about to be spending crazy, you know. And, you know, I think sometimes because people can't directly accommodate their like excessive lifestyle, it turns into a point of like he wasn't able to provide. It's like, no, most people. Even people that work and make a uh, average income could provide. They just can't provide everything you want, you know. So that's where I, I like how you kind of hash that out, and that's where people gotta, you know, give pushback and ask them questions. Like, man, what, what are you talking about? Like, what as far as what was he able to provide? Because you know, if we never would have looked at this, I, I was under the mind like this dude probably <laughs> just got out of prison or something. You know, McKinney. didn't have no job, just laying around on his couch. And here he is, is like a model and a vocalist. You know, he got six million. So obviously he know how to hold on to his bread. He probably just drew direct, clear lines. It was like, man, nah, I'm not about to live this excessive lifestyle. Why don't we invest? Why don't we just hold off? So you always got to get the two sides of the story and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the narrative that I'm just, I just pulled him up to. And the narrative that she's been running with is she got divorced because she was tired of paying all the bills. So I guess they probably hit a rocky patch in their relationship or in their finances to where I guess she was a little bit more stable and she was paying, you know, all the bills according to her. Um, so there's definitely more to the story, okay. but even, but I mean, that's the thing, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, there, there's probably so much more, so I, I wouldn't go into too much detail or, but, if she had to pay for the bills temporarily, you know, why not ride it out with your man? Because, you know, fast forward 2024, he's got a higher net worth than you. So even if he was taking L's at the time and, you know, y'all hit that low patch where now you're having to step up and, you know, take care of everything. It's like, you know, maybe she should have rode that out because fast forward, you know, that would be a net worth of nine million plus. Who knows what type of other deals they could have got as being like a long withstanding black couple. So uh yeah, if this was the sole reason that they um broke, you know, broke apart, um, then I would just say she's, you know, she's not a ride or die type type of woman. <laughs> but like a like a, if it was the case, like man, I would understand if somebody's like not pulling their weight. You know, so if she wasn't, if that was the true case, then I'm I'm not going to be mad at somebody for like separating under them circumstances. But then it goes back because, you know, like she wasn't young when they got together because it, it said they were like, you know, they got divorced at 2002 and stuff. So, you know, you was at a, why were you even dealing with somebody like that? Then if that was the mm -hmm. case, you know, where you walked into a situation where it didn't work out. So typically she was like, got what to do based off of like strictly just physical attraction and stuff, you know, probably like look past like a ton of like dudes that like had they stuff together that was like gunning for her, but it was like, nah, I'm not interested in you. I'm, I'm going for the wrong. Like, you know, she wasn't checking for the character, the values and stuff like that. So it's just like, now that's the sad thing with like stories like this, where I think people, make a lot of bad, I'll say like uh, 
selections when the, when they are like getting married and dating, then you know now she's at the point now where you know it's damn near like hey damn no it's a limited pool of guys out here there's not enough good men what t- people typically say our stuff and then you know where they probably had that such a high standard like dudes got to be like damn near eights and nines and they got to fit this now she's just like bottomed out with the standards it's like look i'll take any race <laughs> that dude could be like 4 11 <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. she's probably before was like hey he gotta be like five five ten and above or something six foot now she's like look 4 11 <laughs> you could work at Chili's, you know. <laughs> you you could be damn near purple. This is like a hey, a pulse, like damn. So yeah, this is what happens when you just, like I said, you have that like crazy standards. And you play the field too long, man. Like you end up taking like a way uh-huh. worse deal than what you ever would have thought. So you want me to go ahead and keep playing the video, or you wanted to jump in on it? Yeah, I mean, and there's not much information on on. Christopher Harvest, um, you know, I just I just trying to find some stuff, but uh, the only thing I was able to find was that he was married to previously married to Vivica A. Fox from ninety eight to two thousand two, and that it says that he's currently single. So maybe she need to run it back. Yeah, Chris, Chris took the money <laughs> his net ran. worth Chris is higher than hers it. now. Yeah. All right, let me play this video. Lee. This was generating. And one of the big uh, I don't know, points of discussion was people were shocked that it's <coughs> still looking for love at 59 years old since she's pretty much dead at this point. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but that was pretty much the, yeah, the, the uh, gist of it. And that wasn't <laughs> even the worst take dead. on this. I'm not even going to give breath to the other point of discussion that people were making about this yet. No. Now, I did personally chuckle when Vivica said that she wouldn't get on a dating app. I'm old fashioned. I'm like, yeah. I need to meet you and sparks yeah. happen yeah. and stuff like that because I just believe people make up stories yeah. saying who and what yeah, they are. Exactly. Which is very true. But then Vivica says, Do you bad. think it's possible to find love on a reality show? My biggest problem is that I'm too picky, but we got to get out there <laughs> and date and yes. explore, try new horizons. Um, so I'm for, for it. For it. So no to dating apps because men deceive. You're all for looking for love on a reality show because that's what the real truth tellers are. <laughs> now, granted, not only would men be okay with your fame, they're looking to profit off your fame. <laughs> and then we're back to keeping a man as a partner, not a husband. Okay, maybe this is more interesting than I thought. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes. <laughs> I feel like you just spoke it into existence. Now. I hope so, girlfriend. I feel like. Oh, they was on that manifestation bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have too much to say about this clip. It's kind of, it, it's sad for one because, you know, she's, you know, 60. So, and she's looking for a partner, you know, and I think that was a good thing that he pointed out. She's not looking for a husband, you know, because at least she understands that that's not probably going to happen um, because she, you know, according to her, she has too high of standards, but I would say that, you know, if your standards are consistently too high, you know, I mean, that's almost synonymous with delusion. So, yeah, no, I would no. say she's delusional as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, man. And it, it, it's sad, man, because, you know, like when we talking to people, we'd be like, look, man, when you age, I don't care, man or female, man, like. And you lose the attraction. That's his father times undefeated, man. You're not going to get around it. So like you said, it's just like, man, you have to have awareness and understanding. Like, look, I got to drop some of my pickiness, especially like what she mentioned earlier. Like, the it's limited. A lot of the guys that, you know, typically have their stuff together, they're they're snatched up. You know, so it's just like, man, you, you got to cave on some stuff and you can't look at it like, Oh, I'm settling. I'm not going to settle or nothing. This is like, well, you're going to wind up in a state more and more years going to go. And then that's like I said, it's just like the sad thing that happens. Like you probably could have got a guy that was like a solid six, seven, has his stuff together, treat you nice. But it's just like, nah, I'm still shooting for the top. But when them years go best and that pool gets smaller and smaller, you you know, you end up, she probably going to end up with a dude that's like damn near a four and a five, man. Like, you know, that's just the reality. So it's just like, man, if you you know, give up on some of that pickiness and all those like superficial things, man, you, you could find somebody. Cause I mean, successful woman, you know, I don't know how the personality is, but it's just like, you know, she definitely could find somebody. And then like, like the guy pointed out, like, man, you want to do a dating show on reality TV, but you ain't trying to use like the, 
up to date methods is it's just like man people are so inconsistent with you know the stuff that they complain about where they'll be like oh the data market is hard it sucks but then they do all the wrong shit so it's like they're attracting the wrong pool of people yeah her ass need to be on bumble what, what's the other one the hookup <laughs> <laughs> need to be on bumble <clears throat> hinge uh what tinder mm-hmm. what they got match yeah what she got, she need to be on all them does she have any kids? There's something I'm a reality TV show. Yeah, Does she have any sure. kids? I think she I'm should. Not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, that would be really sad. Yeah, I don't think she has any kids, man. Damn. Yeah. I never th- uh, thought about that. Comedian being trying to do that. Well, she got adopted or something, but yeah, no, nah, it's just, you know, she definitely need to switch her means and get up off that pickiness. Oh, I think it says daughter. Um, oh, okay. Pro- what was it? Oh, wait. Oh, she doesn't have children. Why at 57 she doesn't have children? Oh, yeah. No, no children. Oh. Man. Oh, okay. Hey, I was looking it up. So, she, yeah, the, the guy's name, Christopher 6ix9ine Harvest. She's a uh, couple divorced in 2002. And then it says Fox briefly dated rapper 50 Cent in 2003. <laughs> you know. <laughs> then in like oh, 2011, yeah. Fox and club promoter Omar Slim White broke off their 10 month engagement. So yeah, oh, yeah, definitely oh. uh, not the best that I'll say. Like <laughs> holding on to stuff. So okay. But yeah. anything else before we go? No, I words? mean I, I don't. No, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to beat her down. Like that's, that's rough to be, um, a successful woman, um, and, you know, attractive, successful woman, you know, and I honestly, like at the height of her career, um, definitely at the top upper echelon, like she probably could have had great relationships and probably had plenty suitors back in her day, but this just goes to show you that. If you want to hold up this crazy standard and operate in delusion, you know, because I think she's she seems like a good person, but this is your future. <laughs> you know, you know, if you operate in not having awareness of of understanding you know, what the market is and overplaying your hand, you know, you'll end up like her at 59. No kids. Um, no partner like forget a husband you know (laughs) you said that out the window huh yeah yeah. i mean i mean she said it out that was out the window so yeah um you know and and more or less but yeah um it's unfortunate for her but um it, it from the clip that it showed where she's talking about hey try anything like at least at least she's not one of these old bitter women who made mistakes and is trying to drag other women down that path. Like, you know, the last part of the clip where she said, Hey, try anything, get out of your comfort zone, even though she's not going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. She's at least, she's at least advising women not to follow in her footsteps and, you know, step outside of your comfort zone. So I can respect her. I definitely respect her for that. Now that's a good point. My part of words, man, it's just like, I don't I don't care how much you think you are on that totem pole, how high you are up there. Man, you better stop being superficial, man, because there are good men and women out here where you're, yeah. you're not going to get everything. And it's just like, you know, father time is going to get us all. So you could be, like you said, delusional and think like how others perceive you sometimes. So everybody kind of lies to themselves like, oh, man, I'm single by choice. I don't need nobody. It's like, man, we all need somebody. We need some form of companionship. So it's like, man, don't don't play that long game and try to go out there and, you know, nitpick people that might be good. Sometimes you need to overlook that stuff and just realize, man, they there there there's no perfect situation, man, and you got to cave on something. So just don't be picky, man, because you're gonna end up in. We're seeing these scenarios play out more and more. So that's my part of words, but peace, everybody. Peace.